first of all, Glenn, through Kulusevski. Perfect start for your old club. Yeah, it was. And they came out of the traps really well. And they broke through that line of uh, Chelsea too easy. And they looked dangerous in the first sort of 15, 20 minutes. He's hitting the target. It's right that it's going to go to Kulusevski. He drives on. He comes inside. And it's just unfortunate. Caldwell turns his back on him. Probably looking back, he'd be happy. He should be saying, well, I should have faced up a little bit on that, really. But it was it was a good start from Tottenham. But, um, you know, then what, how we analyse the next part well, of the games, I don't know. To be honest. Let, let's have a look at it first of all. Um, they cleared up the offside goal. It was all then about the penalty um, from the player who originally gave it away, Joe, um, Romero. What, what was your initial look at this before you saw a replay? My initial... I didn't even notice the tackle, Steve, you know, initially. But ultimately... It's reckless, he's followed through and he's endangered him, so he has, to, he has to give him a red card. It's in the box, he has to give him a penalty. I don't like it, but they've taken their time. Look, Romero's going to have to learn. Yeah, so he's, he, or he's gonna, we're going to be seeing Romero in 10, 15 years and he's going to have 20, 30, 40 red cards in his career. You're going to have to be a hell of a player for a manager to stick by you if you're capable of... Being, there was no need for him to go in without force. Uh, OK, well, we'll go on. I disagree. Oh, sorry, Joe, I don't disagree with you much. But That's fine. Not because of Tottenham, <laughs> but for the, for the sake of football, he's actually won the ball. He's gone through, he's clearing the ball. How can you clear the ball, hit the ball? If he's hit the top of the ball and he's missed the ball completely and then caught the player, I understand the red then. But that, to me, is a booking. But knowing the player, Glenn... And, and a penalty? A penalty and a booking, or...? No. I don't, well, I think he's, he's hit the ball and he's... It, listen, where can you follow through? You can't go anywhere else. Yeah, Michael, I think it, on field, Michael Oliver didn't give it. It's not a red card. No. So is this a good use of VAR no, for you? No, I agree with Joe in that during it, I'm thinking, you know, you're watching the ball bounce around and is the ball going to drop someone? And I didn't immediately think, oh, that's a penalty. Mm-hmm. I didn't. So I don't blame Michael and Did you Oliver. think it was a red card? Uh, once I've seen it again, I agree, yeah, I think it is. So good use of VAR for you? I think so. I, I, I think if you're clearing it, you're hitting it with your, your laces and your foot's coming up. I think he's, oh, I think he's done him there. I think he's follow through and there's force and it's if dangerous it, it, Michael we, we've been if he's going to do him it'd be off on a stretcher and he would be off on a stretcher I'm telling you now I'm not sure he's hit with much more force he's hit that. the ball he's smacked mm. what do you ask a defender to do win the ball look at the ball his intent is to hit the ball and he hit the ball his follow through caught the player mm. if it's a yellow card and a penalty whatever it's not a red in my opinion it's not a red Glenn. if that's in the middle of the pitch in the centre circle do you think he'd have got a red card for that? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, it, I do, yeah. You I think, do, you think the player, do you think the player's reputation's come into play? Because old school referees, without all of this... Sh- lot, should it? I think you have to. You have to. You know, he's, he's, he's rash. He's aggressive. He, by the way, he could have got a red by letter of the law. It wasn't. When he kicked out Levi Cole. So that tells you he's going into a London derby when he's the main centre-half and he's already... He's already and just to back your point right. up, that's four red cards in 64 games for Tottenham now, um, for Romero. Now, we know Cole Palmer kept his call and scored the penalty. What about Udogi earlier on? Uh, he got a yellow card. Did this worry you? It worried me because he's left the ground. If he, if he gets any part of Sterling here, he's off. That is a red card because he's left the ground. He's not in control. He gets lucky in the sense, look, again, he's won the ball and he hasn't really caught mm. Sterling. That, you know, it's, look, he don't, he don't touch him there. Sterling's actually as if he's caught him. For me, that is a yellow card in him. But that is, that is next week if he does the same and he catches the player. That's a red card. Joe? Mm. I agree. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he, I looked at it initially, I didn't see nothing. But listen, I, it's not, I don't like it, but this is modern football. Anytime you leave the ground or you go, sorry, you go to ground, you're making a chance. Can you tackle know, like that anymore, No, that's, that's ridiculous, that tackle. I mean, he's so lucky that he doesn't catch Sterling. Mm. Should that matter? Uh, well, you could say in 10. I think it should matter. I mean, I th- probably should. I think a yellow card, he's got away with it, but he'll have to look at himself and think, I can't do that again. I mean, you are so in control of yourself. You, you so know what you're doing there. To take yourself out of control and lift both legs and fly through the air and become out of control is... You, you can't excuse that. He's a very lucky boy. OK. So Maurizio Pochettino gets a winning first return back to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in his first managerial meeting with Ange Postacoglu. He's the first manager to beat him at Spurs in the league. Jackson Hattrick, let's hear from him, and Chelsea's other goal scorer, Cole Palmer. Guys, what an unbelievable night. Crazy, chaotic, remarkable. Cole, I'm, I mean, I know you're only a young lad, but you've been involved in a game of football like that before? No, not very often. 
it's a um, big game. We knew what it was before we come into it. Big stadium, obviously they're unbeaten, but we thought we could come here and get a result, and yeah, we did that. Well, Nicholas, I said crazy, chaotic. How would you sum that up? Yeah, yeah, very happy. Yeah? It was a difficult time for everybody in the team, but now you know we we're coming back slowly, slowly, and I'm very happy to score three goals. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to have that much ball in your hands? Because it hasn't been the easiest start, has it? Yeah, yeah, very difficult. But life is like this. But now you know my first hat trick, so I'm very happy. I did it in the biggest club in England and everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, first hat trick of his career, which we'll take a look at at the moment. But let's just look at that crazy uh, second half. We mentioned Udogi uh, at half time, how he's on that t- rope. So, why did he make a challenge like this? Well, you're asking the wrong man. Uh, I'd normally be in the sterling position here, uh, just trying to get a toe, seeing the, the tackle coming in. Um, yeah, I mean, he's made the, the referee's decision very, very easy there. You don't dive in. Sterling's going away from goal. The yeah. danger was actually a few seconds earlier. Sterling should have played it left. He made a bad decision. You've almost done the hard bit now. You're now sending them away from goal. You're thinking, right, now stay on your feet. Help will come back. Uh, people will start making runs back and, and, and thickening up the numbers. And then all of a sudden you're just diving and, and, and put your team down to nine men. And that was nine minutes into the second half. And then, Glenn, you were screaming throughout that second half, the high line, the high <laughs> line. Even with nine men, nine could you, men. do you believe they continued no, with I, this? I couldn't, no. We're just going to show clip after clip. And this is, this, this is so naive. I just don't get it. You've got spare men on the ball. They can play the ball in behind any time when they chose, the runners can just pick off. It's, they're like mannequins there, Tottenham. They're all in a line, they're standing still, and they're getting in time after time. It could have ended up six or seven, to be honest. When you look at this, in the end, it was. I'm sitting there thinking, it's going to happen in a minute. They're going to score well, in a minute. When it happened, Joe, but only a quarter of an hour from the end of the 90 minutes. It, it, it was almost Chelsea, Chelsea were their own worst enemies at the time. At any moment in this game, in that run of play the ball could have been played eventually it happens and this is the breakthrough goal from Jackson but Chelsea were nervous Steve and you have to, I can understand why because they would have come in for a hell of a lot of stick if they didn't beat this Tottenham team especially when they play like that I think the, the, the intelligent Chelsea players I thought got it got it Cucurella made some good runs Sterling made some good runs you know and, and, and eventually Chelsea worked it out but it, it was crazy I agree with Glenn like to play that way if we got 20 of the world's top coaches in a room and said, right, give them a, 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 a thought um, process, said, like, you're down to nine men, you're still in the game, how, give me a tactics how to play it. None of them would have done what Ange done. We praised Ange, and rightly so, because he's, he's been amazing. But I think tonight, I think he got it wrong. I don't know, I don't know what he, how he was thinking they were going to get back yeah, in the game. When you're like down that. to nine men, you condense, you condense play. And you can't condense it with nine men by pressing and playing so high like they do every game 11 v 11. So you have to condense it in your own half, on the edge of your box, make the spaces short. If you hit them on the break, you hit them on the break. And then decide, maybe if you're 2-1 down, mm. with 10 minutes, you can play like that maybe for 10 minutes. Mm. And then send people. And you, you try and play set plays. Yeah. Try and break the game up. They nearly scored from two set plays. Dyer got a fantastic Well, the, well Dyer had it in the back of the net. Yeah. Yeah. But then what about this for Son at 2-1? When he went through with nine men. I know, big chance, a really big chance. Um, on his left foot, we know how lethal he is with his left foot, and it's a bit of a counter-attack. This is what Spurs should have been playing for. Um, you're hoping for a bit of magic, an individual bit of brilliance. Doesn't quite catch it exactly how he wants, not quite in the corner, but it's a very good save and it's a big chance. But that's what you're hoping for as a Spurs fan, as a Spurs player. And then you know, 24 you're under the seconds later, the game was over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on that high line again. Mm. Yeah, I mean, going back to what Glenn said, you know, about the way that they play with that high line. You, you, look, when you're down to nine men, you're going to have to defend. You've got a back four, all right? And they're going to have to, such a difficult job, even if you defend on the back of your goal. But doing what they're doing now for this goal again, you know, look at them, they're all sprinting. But how many times did that look? They're exhausted. They've had 111 minutes, however long the game was, and they've had to do probably 20 unnecessary sprints back towards their own goal. This is, if this, this could have been seven or eight at this point. It could. Uh, and I don't, blame, I don't blame the players. I no. think they give everything. And, and one thing I would say, they back in their manager because they, they did it even though... I think they'll be questioning them, though. Mm. In that dressing room, in the shower, chatting, they go, did we really have to play like that? With mm. The manager didn't change it. Look, Andrew's done a fantastic job, don't get me wrong. But, but you've got to condense the space. Mm. And plus, it's not the normal back four. You've got Hoybier going back second half as a centre-back and you've got Dyer who hasn't kicked the ball all season. 
Mm. And they're, they're asked to, I felt sorry for them, they're asked to be on the halfway line and sprint back in and cope with them type of balls time and time again. It just didn't make sense to me. OK, well, let's see what the Tottenham manager, beaten for the first time in the Premier League as the Tottenham manager, makes of it all. Well, and you said there'd be bumps in the road and sure enough tonight there was one, but in all your time in football, have you ever known anything quite like that? Yeah, look, it's hard. It's pretty hard to process because it's uh, yeah, almost impossible to kind of analyse the game because, um, yeah, it just seemed to get out of control uh, through large parts of it. And, um, you know, you, you, you're left obviously disappointed with the result, but just really proud of the players' efforts, you know. Um, you know, that they gave everything and I guess um, that's a positive we'll take out of it. Yeah, how big an effort was it from the guys who stayed on the pitch and the ones you brought on how heroic yeah i mean you know like we're very very close to getting an equalizer a couple of times and um yeah it goes shows the, the spirit and character which to be fair to the lads they've shown that from day one um you know we've had all sorts of challenges to overcome just uh, a bridge too far today uh, you said in your first answer the game got out of control after a, a brilliant maybe first 15 minutes why did it get out of control yeah, like I said, it's hard for me to process. I thought we started really well, you know, we scored a great goal inches away from another one and called it offside. And, yeah, I thought we were, yeah, the game went, was going as we wanted it to. And then, you know, obviously, <coughs> you know, the red card sort of, um, you know, affected the game. And then like I said it just it just seemed to, I don't know, We, I felt like I was standing around waiting for things to happen most of the game, you know, with VAR intervention and it just, just felt like, you know, a lot of a lot of standing around. Mm. Is it about VAR? Mm. Yeah, I think it, it's killing the game. It's, it's becoming almost like an NFL game, stop, start. Today there were so many incidences, but every, every game seems to be around VAR decisions. And it's not VAR all the time, it's the rules of the game. There's a load of things we could go a deep dive into here about offsides and things like that. But at the moment, it, it, you know, 21 minutes of extra time mm. we play because we're waiting Which for Which is time. why we're almost uh, running out of time. So, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, very quickly, I mean, aside from all that, Chelsea's win. Can they push on from here now on the Mauricio Pochettino? Yes. Um, like I said before the game, that this means, in my mind, that the game against Brentford, which they got turned over at Stamford Bridge, was a blip in what is otherwise has been very promising signs. I've seen a bit of them promising signs tonight. Ultimately, they got over the line and won the game against their biggest rivals. Gentlemen, thanks for your company. Just another normal night in the Premier League. <laughs> we'll see you soon.